So in this video, we're going to take our old friend, the explicit formula, and learn how to change it. And consider what we're being asked here. We're told there's an arithmetic sequence with a common difference of three, and a term, the 22nd term in the sequence, is the number 26. And what they want to know is the ninth term in the sequence. So if you don't know where to start, always start here. A n equals a 1 plus n minus 1 times d. Okay, this is the explicit formula. And let's just briefly explain again what this means conceptually. Some term in the sequence is separated from the first term by a number of jumps where each jump is this size. Okay, that's what this is saying. Just because it has a1 written here doesn't mean it always has to be a1, right? This is a formula about jumps and how big the jumps are, and how much space there is between them, and all that. So why not change this? Why not change this formula to say, uh, first of all, let's make n equal to 22. I think that'll be better. And let's make 1 equal to 9. We can do things like this as long as we're careful about it. See how I changed n to 22? You have to be consistent. Okay, so n changes to 22, and I changed 1 to 9. Got to do it everywhere. Okay. Now, the reason I like this right here is because it's going to let us solve the problem because we know some of these things and we want some of these things. I chose a 9 here because that's the variable we're looking for. I chose a 22 because that's the variable we're given. It's always good to write formulas in terms of what you want and what you know. So let's proceed. The 22nd term is 26. I don't know what the ninth term is. We'll figure it out. I can do 22 minus 9, I hope. That's 13. And d, we were told this at the beginning, remember? d is 3. So 13 times 3 is uh, 39. We're going to subtract 39 from each side over here. And 26 minus 39 is negative 13. Okay, that's how we solve this. Key point being, you can change the subscripts on the explicit formula as long as you are consistent and you do it everywhere. So let's take that idea and use it on this problem. We're told that the 44th term is 200, negative 266. The 31st term is negative 149. What's the value of the first term? Okay. Well, before we can do this, we're going to go back to the explicit formula. You know, as always, start here. And once we get it written down, we're going to realize uh, maybe we should change it because we're told something about the 44th term and the 31st term. So let's just change these things. And we'll say n equals 44 and I'm going to change 1 to 31. And let's be consistent about that. Okay, so n changes to 44, 1 changes to 31, and look what happens. This is great. Now we can just figure out what d is, because I've got negative 266 over here, I've got negative 149 over here, and I know what 44 minus 31 is. I think I, I know it. Uh, yeah, it's 13. 13d. Okay, so we can solve this. It's just a single equation, and here I am without my calculator, so hold on a second. I could probably do this math, guys, but, um, you know, people don't like seeing me make mistakes all over the place. So, negative 117 equals 13d, which means uh, divide each side by 13, uh, 13, and that looks like negative 9 to me, so negative 9 equals d. That's not the answer, but this is super important because now we can start over again with the explicit formula. And this time I'm going to jump right into saying um, n equals, you know, we'll just use 44, because it's, it's there. I'm looking at it. Uh, equals a1, that's what I want, plus n minus 1 times d. Now remember that idea I just mentioned earlier. Try to write formulas in terms of something you know and something you want. In this case, the 44th term is something we know. You could have used the 31st term. It would have been just fine. Uh, the, f the first term is what I want. We're going to figure it out this way. 43 times d, which is negative 9. I am not doing that in my head. Hold on a second. Let's see. Uh, 43 times negative 9 equals... Okay, so that's going to be negative 387. We've got negative 266 over here. If you want to stop the video here, this is just a little basic um, arithmetic, but let's just work through it to the end. Two, negative 266 
plus 387 equals 121. Something that's good to do in all these formulas is just check your work, see if it makes sense. Okay, let's, let's do that. When you go from the 44th term, which is negative 266, to the 31st term, negative 149, you can see things are moving in a positive direction. So it makes sense to me that our answer is even more positive than the 31st term. Okay, I don't know if it's exactly right, but at least it's moving in the right direction. If I were in a test and I had limited time, that would be my sanity check. Is this, is this even in the right ballpark?